But a lot of very strong opinions out there about how long it takes for a coffee to reach its peak after roasting. Some say a couple of days, some say eight weeks. In this video, we test that. We find out when is the actual peak time to drink coffee after roasting. Stick around and find out more. Hi, I'm Dr. Adam Carr from the Coffee Science and Education Centre. In this channel, we do equipment reviews, we teach coffee skills, and we do research on the science to put it all together. Hit subscribe below for more videos just like this. So what is aging? You know, what is staling? What chemically is happening there? Well, I suppose there are two main processes, um, or two main phenomena, I suppose you could call it, that are happening inside of a bag of coffee as it's sitting there over time. Okay, the first thing is that coffee degasses. So when coffee is roasted, often a lot of CO2 is produced and a whole lot of volatiles, volatiles being very, very small molecules that exist in a gaseous state. It's all trapped inside the coffee matrix, a beans or a porous matrix, okay? There's some space inside of them. And that's where a lot of these things sit. Well, over time, um, these things start moving out of the coffee and into the headspace. So there's a process called degassing. And we've often found at Seven Miles that a coffee requires about five days after roasting to degas to a point where it's not degassing significantly anymore. We found that if you use a coffee within that five day period, we find that the extraction is quite bubbly, a little bit more inconsistent. Surprise, surprise, because more CO2 is degassing as you ground the coffee and then extract the water through the coffee. So that's one process we call it degassing. The other process that's happening, let's just call it coffee chemistry, um, because there are a lot of different reactions involved in this, um, is what we would consider the staling or aging process, right? So inside a coffee bag, we've got the coffee and we've got the atmosphere around the coffee. And the proportion of that atmosphere of oxygen and water will have a huge impact on how fast or how slowly that coffee ages. Um, there are a whole lot of reactions. I could go into all the different classes of reactions happening there and how water and oxygen, but suffice it to say that oxidation is one of the primary mechanisms in there. All these reactions happen in concert to change the flavor of this coffee over time. So ultimately, I mean, it's a balance, right? I mean, that's why we say aging and staling, right? It's actually, it's a balancing type equation that's happening inside of here. Chemistry's happening, degassing's happening, all of it's happening at the same time. Really, the only way to tell when the best time to drink a coffee is, um, is not through chemical modeling, although that would be kind of fun and interesting, um, but it's actually to taste the coffees at different times with particular standards, uh, to understand really when, you know, coffee is at its peak. So how did we test what is, you know, what is the optimum time to drink your coffee? Well, it's important to note there are a couple of different ways that coffee has been packaged before we go into the actual taste tests. Um, at Seven Miles, we use nitrogen flushing. So I mentioned that atmosphere doing some chemistry. You flush that thing with nitrogen, a lot of those oxidation reactions, a lot of things that react with water and, uh, and oxygen, those reactions are minimized or the kinetics are significantly lowered because you've got an atmosphere of nitrogen, not oxygen, or very minimal oxygen. Um, so that's called nitrogen flushed. And we found that typically over time that preserves coffee for longer. The other way people package it is literally a hand pack. They have an open bag, they shovel coffee into it, and then it's sealed. These coffees, because they are exposed to more oxygen than the gas flush versions, typically age faster. Uh, so it's an important point to note. So what are the results? Okay, so we used a medium roasted coffee um, in both gas flushed and non-gas flushed bags. For gas flushed coffees, we found that their peak flavor was at exactly two weeks, um, or between 1.5 and two weeks, actually, um, just based on the way that the curve uh, modeled us through here and actually maintain this peak right through to eight weeks. Now we didn't test this at six months, but we do have evidence to suggest that at six months this peak is relatively maintained. But from the experiments that we did over eight weeks, we found that it maintained its peak um, consistently. Interestingly enough, when we tested the non-gas flush versions of the coffee, same coffee, same packaging, just without that nitrogen atmosphere, we found that the peak was reached significantly earlier. So again, between one and two weeks, really at 1.5 weeks was its peak. And that peak, interestingly enough, amongst all the tasters, or the testers that were inside the, the experiments, they all agreed that the, ta the flavor was superior at that one and a half week period. So non-gas flash coffee generally has a slight superiority in terms of taste, but that superiority, or that peak in flavor, dropped off quite dramatically after about two and a half weeks. So in other words, surprise, surprise, non-gas flash coffees don't last as long. Their peak is generally about 1.5 weeks. Gas flush coffees hit their peak at about one and a half, two weeks and maintain that peak for a very long portion of time. The other findings that we found, obviously in line with what we've always known at Seven Miles, is that using coffee within five days generally results in a fairly inconsistent extraction, a fairly harsh flavor. You can imagine all the carbon dioxide that's degassed from that coffee, once absorbed into water, becomes carbonic acid and it can taste a bit, you know, a bit acidic, a bit tart. We use the word harsh. Um, 
some people like that flavor and you know power to them they're welcome to, to have that opinion and extract their coffee like that but we would never recommend drinking coffee within five days especially where consistency is concerned well, that's all from me for now if you'd like to learn more about this we have a full article that's going to be linked below in this video here so click on that have a read uh, if you have further questions you can reach out to us directly absolutely um, but until next time i'm adam carr thanks for watching